Hi, today I'm reading Behold the Bold Umbrellaphant and Other Poems by Jack Polotsky, illustrated by Karen Berger. And um, a little side note, I got to attend a conference where Karen Berger was speaking and um, I got to learn a lot about her artwork, which is fantastic. So here we go. She uses a lot of um, receipts, old book pages, trash type things to make collages for her artwork. So if you could look for that in the book. And Jack Plotsky is a very famous poet. So here we go. Behold the bold umbrellaphant. Behold the bold umbrellaphant that not the least afraid to forage in the broiling sun, for it is in the shade. The pachyderm's uncanny trunk is probably unique and ends in an umbrella that has yet to spring a leak. And so the bold umbrellaphant is ever at its ease, no matter if the temperature is 99 degrees. And when a sudden thunderstorm sends oceans from the sky, that fortunate umbrellaphant remains entirely dry. So you can see all the artwork done here. The Bizarre Armadillo, Alarmadillos. The Bizarre Alarmadillos are a clamorous quartet for they're in constant frenzy, they're increasingly upset. You'd imagine they'd be calmer. No one means them any harm. And besides, they're thickly armored, yet they're always in alarm. When they push their panic buttons, buzzers buzz and beepers beep. Brass alarms clang oh, even louder. It's no wonder they can't sleep. Then they flail their tails in terror as they holler and they whoop. Yes, those four alarmadillos they are an odd and noisy group. <laughs> so they look like armadillos, but they're alarmadillos. I like this one a lot. The ballpoint penguins. The ballpoint penguins, black and white, do little else but write and write. Although they've nothing much to say, they write and write it away. The ballpoint penguins do not think. They simply write with endless ink. They write of ice. They write of snow. For that is all they seem to know. At times, these shy and silent birds will verbally express their words. But mostly, they do not recite. They aim their beaks and write and write. I think there's a lot of rhyming words in this one. The links of chain. The sun is up and on the plain. We see and hear the links of chain, which dazzling in the early light is truly a resplendent slight sight. As all around the plain it bounds, it makes resounding clanging sounds. So as it circumnavigates, the morning air reverberates. The links of chain must not forget to vanish when the weather's wet, for water soon would make it rust, reducing it to orange dust. It keeps a sharp and watchful eye on every cloud that happens by, and that is why the links of chain is never spotted in the rain. This is kind of funny. The pop-up toadsters. The pop-up toadsters hop and hop, then startlingly abruptly stop and place in slots atop their heads fresh slices of assorted breads. A minute passes, two at most, then up pop perfect pairs of toast, which happily don't go to waste. For toasters now arrive in haste. They snatch the toast up in their beaks, 
and soar away with joyful shrieks. And now, with empty slots on top, the pop-up toadsters hop and hop. <laughs> I love the little frog or toad legs. This one's called Shoehorns. This is made out of a ledger, it looks like. So, shoe hornets. Shoe hornets make it easier for you to put on shoes. They quickly slide your feet inside. You can, of course, refuse. And that is what you'd better do, for you should know one thing. It's truly, it's true they choose to help with shoes, but when they do, they sting. There it is, the stinger. Here comes a panthometer. Here comes a panthermometer, a cat we fondly hail, for we can tell the temperature by looking at its tail. Its tail is clearly accurate, as we have often found, and so the panthermometer is nice to have around. Here comes a panthermometer, a feline we adore. It's always set to tell us what the weather has in store. It tells us when we're sweltering and when we're apt to freeze. We praise the panthermometer that helps us by degrees. The circular sawtus. So it's like a tortoise and a saw. The circular sawtus does little but yawn until it sees something that needs to be sawn and then with such skill that it merits awards turns trees into logs which it saws into boards the circular sawtus may seem to be slow but when it is sawing that's simply not so its shell doesn't hinder its furious pace and shields it from chips that might fly in its face it saws and it saws, rarely sopping to rest. It saws with proficiency, fever and zest. At last, when its sawing is done for the day, the circular sawtus just lumbers away. And this one is, if you can guess, a balboa and a light bulb. The limber balboa. The limber balboa is hard to ignore it's out every night for it loves to explore. It has no idea what it's likely to find as it lights up its way with its brilliant behind. It winds around meadows, meanders by trees, shining its light on whatever it sees. It studies the land as it wanders about. Its light is amazing and never goes out. It's wondrous to watch the Balboa behave. It turns up its beam when it peers in a cave. It lights up the sand as it winds down the shore. The limber Balboa is hard to ignore. This one's called the Clocktopus, an octopus in a clock. Emerging from the salty sea, a wondrous beast appears. It clearly is a Clocktopus. We marvel as it nears. It moves with slow precision at a never changing pace. It's tentacles and tempo with the clock upon its face. While undulating east to west across the swirling sand, it ticks away the minutes and it has a second hand. We watch it for an hour and it never goes astray. There's nothing like a clocktopus to tell the time of day. The Trumpetoos and two baboons. The Trumpetoos and two baboons are blaring our discordant tunes. They play them loud, they play them long, but most of all, they play them wrong. They open up their brazen throats, unleashing a barrage of notes that would be better left unplayed. But play they do as they parade. Their sounds are jarring to the ear as noisily they persevere and play in clashing beats and keys, unmusical catastrophes. They march about in close array. We wish they'd simply march away or stop and take a silent snooze, those two baboons and trumpet twos. This is about tweezers. The tweezels of the forest. There he is, tweezers. Looks like maybe a squirrel. 
The tweezels of the forest are considerate and sweet, but unless they're busy tweezing, they feel somehow co incomplete. They walk and walk around the woods upon a constant quest for shrubs and trees. They need a tweeze. It's tweezing they do best. The tweezels are well-meaning and they always try to please. When anything needs tweezing, they immediately tweeze. They tweeze with great dexterity, facility, and flair. As long as tweezing's called for, all the tweezels will be there. The tearful zippopotamus. So it's a zipper and a hippopotamus. The tearful zipper popotamus regularly cry. They seldom cease their weeping and they seldom even try. They have zippers on their bellies, on their legs and heads and backs, but the zippers keep unzipping, so they rarely can relax. The dreary zipper popotamus stand around and mope. If all their zippers open, they would surely have no hope. Their zippers help contain them, so they worry and they fret that their insides will fall out, though this hasn't happened yet. Those fearful zipper potamuses find it very hard to keep their zippers zippered, so they're constantly on guard. Perhaps they wouldn't spend their days with such a sense of dread if they took out all those zippers and put buttons on instead. And the ocelot, the ocelock. The ocelot is out of luck. It cannot move. It's simply stuck. It's waiting for a key monkey to open it and set it free. By accident, apparently, it locked itself around a tree. No wonder that it seems in shock or sorry for the ocelot. And this is the final one, the solitary spatuloon. At home with the blue lagoon, the solitary spatuloon calls longingly as it glides by syrup is this plaintive cry the fowl both curious and rare now flips a pancake in the air its tail we note is well designed with this peculiar task in mind we watch with wonder and delight until it vanishes from sight yet even as it disappears faint strains of syrup will fill our ears we wait and as we wait we yearn in hopes the bird will soon return but sadly, in the blue lagoon, we fail to spy the spatuloon.